and that was the first piece of work which was done in that context on patents and licenses. And that's something I think that we need to look at worldwide with the dissemination of patent law. I was surprised to learn, for example, that companies like Coca-Cola funded an enormous amount of research into patents at universities in the US so as to ensure that their patents were as economic as possible. That's a model we need in Europe, I believe. We don't need only the European patent, which can be made available and which will work very efficiently, particularly for our small and medium-sized firms, even for one-man companies, which then enjoy protection from exploitation by big business. And I think it's important that we ensure that that system works effectively and that the European patent system be seen as one of the world's most modern and effective systems. That calls for effort and it's a genuine challenge. We need to approach it in a very professional way and I think we need to look at the intellectual property component of the Directive on Services into ALIA. We have uh, Marco Furlinger, Director of the Internal Market Directorate General of the European Commission, and I'm very pleased that the Commission has decided to send uh, the top person who is possessed not only of a formidable mind but also of great willpower to ensure that we have a guarantee that our work will succeed. And indeed, um, in the Council, in the form of the Swedish Presidency, we have significant support. We have Alexander Ramsight with us, who is an expert on intellectual property law. And for any Presidency, I think it is a challenge to ensure that these things are properly implemented. I was talking earlier about uh, our work with the public. Um, Thomas Tindermans from White and Case knows only too well um, what this means. Of course, he's been a friend of ours for a long time because um, he was an MEP in Brussels for many years. Mrs. Liska is head of the uh, dialogue. Uh, department, the Chief Dialogues Officer in ABN Ambro Bank. We also have Stefan Leubel, who is Legal Advisor for International and Legal Affairs of the European Patent Office. We are pleased that the European Parliament works closely with the European Patent Office to develop common strategies. We wish to see a development of the decision-making process. We wish to see close and effective cooperation and I'm very pleased to see you here because I think that the European Patent Office has done a great deal of useful work and will continue to be an important pillar of our work. And then finally from the Hungarian Patent Office we have Andreas Jukuti. Um He is a very well-known specialist and I'm delighted to have him with us. He'll be aware that Europe is involved in difficult dialogue because often in the world of European patents um, different interests fight one another tooth and nail but that's what politics is for very often to shed light on conflicts, allow opinions to be formed and on that basis to take decisions. Let me turn then with great happiness to Margot Fullinger to continue. Thank you much Mr Chairman and uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. The Commission is very, very pleased that you have chosen to organize this Innovation Summit just at the time when inside of the Commission we are thinking of the priorities for the next legislature. And I can tell you already, innovation and promotion of innovation, protection of innovation, facilitation of innovation will, among, will be among the top priorities. We in Europe need to innovate ever more 
because we in Europe, we can compete only if we are always staying at the cutting edge. We cannot compete on labor costs. We cannot compete on taxes. We cannot compete on easy access to natural resources. We can only compete on the knowledge and the skills of our people and on the innovative aspects and, uh, and characteristics of our products and services. And intellectual property rights is key if you want to facilitate and to promote innovation, because as Paul Rubich has said already, innovation is not for free. Innovation needs investment, and in order to uh, invest, you need a fair return on your investments. And that role to ensure that you can have a fair return of new investments, that is the role of intellectual property rights. But intellectual property rights are not only a tool to protect your investments. Intellectual property rights are increasingly also a tool for you to get into business because intellectual property rights are an intangible asset. They can be used by business to uh, gain access to finance, which is particularly important for SMEs. And therefore, not only innovation will be a key priority for the next commission, IPR will also be among the top priorities for the commission. And some of you may have seen that among the political guidelines recently issued by our president Barroso, a new IPR strategy figures very prominently. We have already an IPR framework established at European level. In some areas, it's functioning very well. In other areas, it's functioning rather badly. There are a number of missing links. And let me take you through the missing links, which will be addressed subsequently in the panels this afternoon. The first missing link is the creation of a community patent and the creation of a unified patent litigation system. We have in Europe managed to establish the European Patent Organization and the European Patent Office in which you can get a, the grant of a European patent with one stop shot. This system is a major European achievement, and it means that life for the applicant can be very easy up to the grant of the patent. But after the grant of the patent, that is when the difficulties start, because for your patent to be enforceable, you have your patent to valid in each of our member states in which you seek protection. And that means you have to deal with a number of national patent offices. You have, you have high transactions costs resulting from having to deal with national offices because you cannot deal with themselves. You very often do not speak the language. You have to pay patent agents. And moreover, you have to pay for translations. You have to, basically, you have to translate your patent into all the languages of all the member states where you want protection. There is